I think the history of magnetic resonance imaging at Penn State uh, is one in which we've been a real pioneer in the high field MRI area. It's a real strength of the program and I think it's had an impact in a broader sense across uh, the growth of MRI that we've seen. NMR research started here in the 1980s and it involved a lot of in vivo phosphorus spectroscopy looking at metabolism and physiology in animals and in human subjects with a variety of applications. As time went by, these things evolved and uh, there was one of the first three Tesla whole body MRI systems installed here and that led to a variety of of what we would call, say, high field uh, research interests. I also think we've had an impact on the field professionally. We've had uh, a lot of people have had important service roles in, in the International Society for Magnetic Residence Medicine. Uh, we've been an important collaborator with many of the other high field labs across North America and the world. And that's been, it's that networking that we have within the, the greater field of MRI that I'm most proud of. As the field of magnetic resonance matured, there's been more of a focus on looking at novel applications. So it's been taking on a much more interdisciplinary role uh, with our colleagues in cardiology, in neurology, in minimally invasive surgery. And we're looking at how we can apply this novel technology to ask important questions that will help us to have hopefully better outcomes for our patients. I use fMRI to study how this, uh, this uh, olfactory system interacts with other sensory system. In research, it's known as multi-sensory integration. So what we do in olfactory fMRI is that we uh, put a, a patient or a subject inside the scanner and uh, we give, give them some olfactory uh, tasks such as smelling or they have to decide whether they can detect it or they can whether they like it or not. So while they do that, we scan their brain. That way we can figure out what brain regions are involved during olfactory processing. Once we have the, the spatial locations, figure out what brain regions are involved in this type of processing, then we can uh, decide whether it is different in certain patient populations. Our goal here in, in our lab is to use that information to, to maybe uh, identify patients or subjects who are at risk of developing neurodegenerative diseases. Another application has been looking at gustatory functional magnetic resonance imaging, where we're looking at how taste may impact uh, chronic problems such as obesity that are problems for our populations. I've been collaborating with other scientists here at the Medical Center for some years and uh, we've developed an interest in taste and reward as related to what I do, which is bariatric surgery. We were interested in changes in how food tastes and appeals to people after the gastric bypass because most of our patients do say things taste really different, things that used to appeal to me don't appeal to me anymore, things taste very, very sweet, for example, so they no longer wanted a lot of sweet things. So we wanted to find out if we could correlate that with actual changes in the brain. We built an MR-compatible taste stimulant device, a gustometer, to be used during fMRI studies for Dr. Ann Rogers. The device delivers sweet and salty stimulants based on a visual cue and then the activation, the brain activation can be used to analyze the physiological preferences of a subject. Even though ma magnetic resonance imaging has been around for over 30 years, we're constantly finding new ways that we can begin to apply it to different applications. I think the application of obesity is a great example of a technique that's, that's evolved, that's matured, and now is finding a, a very important clinical application. I think there's always new areas that we can apply this technology, and it's that, it's that evolution and be able to take what is a very powerful technique and look for ways of being able to identify new ways we can apply it to care of our patients. Our, our work is really not one discipline's job, not just one type of doctor. So I'm a neurologist. I need to collaborate with a radiologist. 
So we're a physician, but physician cannot carry that work alone either. We need an MR physicist, we need a computer scientist, also we need specialized statistician to work together so we can decipher what that imaging um, means to us. So that really, really multidisciplinary nature. This facility is like utopia for, for NMR research. This place is really well equipped. We have pretty much all we need for the, for the, as an MRI researcher. As we look towards the future, I think the challenges are going to be how do we maximize the value of techniques such as magnetic resonance imaging for our patients. And that's going to involve being able to be more quantitative, more standardized, and be able to get, be able to make diagnosis in a more efficient fashion. So making the techniques faster, more reliable, and more reproducible across larger populations.